Hello and welcome to graphic.com.gh from the Graphic Online TV newsroom. This is the News in Brief. Was that was a self-confession incident of a crime suspected to have been committed some years ago by the suspect in an attempt to cite an example in a radio discussion on a commercial base on Pa FM implicated himself. This led to netizens calling on the police to act. Let's watch how Nanapoku PCA said and which has landed him into trouble with the law. Maria Kurebi at the age of bare 14 years. Papa no sonan papa akwan sonan o madre stand him no papa no was called my him group ah lo na me share my experience what na me we na our body na no body to say me we now from class 6 to what to be o wie kuma ka eh o ka me boni nyo na me bani do sa level no eh na me hu ni say teacher ni bia sha se ne no ye na afri how are you na i'm fine I me to me my wife didn't come and I'm sorry. They say, you fast way on here. I how are you? I'm fine. I didn't tell you. I thought, well, come on, let me say, yes. Hello, come on, me, boy. I'm saying, I'm boy. I said, I'm not saying. I was 14, 15. I was coming out for so many, you know, or the classes, 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 and the bed, and the panel of your crack, right? Virgin. The DB. I thought, wow, I was saying, when you say, I'm a I'm saying, I'm Paul, the love natural karma. Come and share me, son. To come Oh, dear. You don't want to. From this revelation made on Sompa FM, Anapoku PAC alias Kwabna has been arrested by the police on the offense of defilement. PAC confessed on the radio program that he defiled a 14 year old girl while she was still in school. In the video, Poku PSC described in detail how he repeatedly has sexual intercourse with a 14-year-old who supposedly was the daughter of a wealthy man in Domai in Kro in the Bono region. The confession has attracted police attention and today, the police picked him up for questioning. He is currently in custody, assisting police investigations into his claims. Two-thirds of Ghana's coastline is at risk of destruction due to sea wave action and human activities in the coastal areas, the Ghana Hydrological Authority has said. Addressing the press conference in today the GHA said the number accounts for 370 kilometers of Ghana's 550 kilometers coastline from west to east and hosts a number of strategic installations and infrastructure that are currently being threatened by tidal waves. Ghana has about 550 kilometer stretch of coastline and um, they are all at various um, levels of uh, vulnerability. Now, our work tells us that there is about a third of our coastline that is at, uh, that's fairly stable and at low vulnerability. Now, a two-third of it, which is about uh, 370 kilometer stretch, is at risk. It's important for us to undertake coastal protection measures to protect um, that uh, two-third of the coastline. That works up to about 370 kilometers. Out of the 370, there are eight ongoing projects uh, at various stages of completion, and there are a couple that have been completed in the past, summing up to the eight, um, 80 kilometer stretch. That leaves 290 kilometer stretch of our coastline unprotected. Now, within that 290 kilometer stretch, there are various important national assets at risk that need urgent action to, you know, to uh, protect them. And we can talk about the Abazi uh, power enclave where we have a thermal plant that needs uh, protection, you know, to safeguard um, altogether about 730 uh, megawatts, you know. Uh, we have important um, strategic roads in Cape Coast, where we have the Cape Coast um, uh, Takradi, uh, what do you call it, Accra Takradi Road, a strategic road that is at risk, along with uh, important educational installations like the St. Augustine's College, the UCC and the um, Nursing and Midwifery um, Training College. In Shama, uh, um, along, you know, along the beach line, we also have uh, important um, assets. We have communities, livelihoods, you know, roads, and others at risk that needs protection. In Zilebu, we have the, the forward operation base that was recently built by the Navy, Ghana Navy um, operating um, base that uh, needs protection because the uh, communities around the base are uh, eroding very fast and we need to take immediate steps to protect them. We have um, Ningo Pampram shoreline 
um, that also needs protection. And then Blekusu, uh, which is um, not news to uh, most of you, um, we have uh, you know, strategic road, we have communities at risk, uh, livelihoods at risk, that needs uh, protection. And following public backlash on why members of parliament should be allowed to install sirens in their vehicles and avoid joining traffic congestion, same as all other road users, the proposed amendment has been withdrawn. Apart from the siren, the MPs wanted to also exempt themselves from speed limits, but all the proposed amendments were today withdrawn by the Transport Minister when parliament reconvened. A proposed amendment to the road traffic regulations of 2012 had been laid in Parliament on June 14 by the Minister of Transport. Apart from the exemptions granted ambulances and specialized vehicles in the use of sirens and an exemption from speed limits, the proposed amendment was aimed at allowing members of Parliament, Ministers of State and Justices of the Supreme Court to also use sirens in their vehicles. This generated public debate with many condemning the MPs and accusing them of being selfish. Following the public reaction, the Minister of Local Government and Rural Development Martin E.J. Mensa Kosa, on behalf of the Minister of Transport, we do the instrument when Parliament reconvened on Tuesday. President Ekofado has unveiled plans for the establishment of four new universities to address the increase in demand for tertiary education. He had made this known during his confirmation of his fifth honorary doctorate from Valley View University and said his administration was committed to enhancing the quality and accessibility of education. By eliminating the requirement for a guarantor, will empower students from economically disadvantaged backgrounds to pursue their traditional aspirations without undue financial burden. This has meant a large increase in the numbers of students seeking tertiary education. From 443,978 students, in the 2016-2017 academic year to 711,695 on the, in the 2022-2023 academic year. And it is in response to this increase, the government has decided to establish four new universities in Mampon, in the Ashanti region, in Akrodia, in the Bron region, in Bonso in the eastern region, and Kintampo in the Bron East region, and expand the facilities in existing ones. And before we go, the Ghana Education Service has announced the school will be reopened for the first year senior high school students for the 2024 to 2025 academic year on Friday, September 27, 2024. This is predominantly for the junior high school graduates who completed the basic education certificate examination last Monday. In a letter dated July 15, 2024, addressed to all regional directors of education, the acting director for the Schools and Instructions Division of the GES, Prince Ajiman Dia, advised parents and school heads to take note of the update and prepare accordingly. Additionally, the GES stated that the vacation date for the students will be on Friday, December 6, 2024. Thank you for watching. For more news, please visit our website graphic.com.gh and follow us on social media at Graphic Online Ghana on TikTok, Daily Graphic Ghana on Facebook and Instagram, and Graphic GH on YouTube and X. I am Mirabna Kogba.